When did Indonesia gain its independence from the Netherlands? 1945. It depends on who you ask. So let's ask ourselves, how did Indonesia gain its independence? Well, by we fighting ourselves free from these Dutch imperialists. Well, we tried to keep our colony, but the big boy here stopped us from doing so. Else we didn't got our money, you know. There's conflicting views about this. In this video, we're going to discuss the history of Indonesia's road to independence. Some things might surprise you. Stay tuned. In 1816, the Dutch East Indies were established. Now this here was not the very first time that the Dutch were in Indonesia. They had already arrived there centuries before when they traded on different islands. This was done by the VOC, the Dutch East India Company. And trading and colonization, however, on a smaller scale, took place. But because of the French Revolutionary Wars, the Netherlands came under French control and Java became occupied by the British. After the dust of the Napoleonic Wars has settled down, the Dutch possessions in the East Indies were transferred back to the Netherlands and thus the Dutch East Indies were born. Over the course of the 19th and early 20th century, the Dutch completed the territorial conquest of the Indonesian archipelago and basically they laid the foundation for what is now Indonesia. Around 1900, the Dutch launched their ethical policy where they basically accepted their responsibility for the welfare of the local population and they wanted to improve irrigation, migration and education. Now there's a lot to say about this policy but where it came down to is that it didn't reach its goals. It basically lacked proper funding. However, those very few Indonesians that got education, they learned about the Dutch revolt against Spanish rule. They were inspired by principles of the Enlightenment. Think of the principle of self-determination, the right for people to establish their own country. So yeah, you do the math. What these Indonesians were thinking was very simple. Why do we let ourselves be colonized by a foreign nation? So after this, different nationalist movements within the Dutch East Indies emerge. Some were fairly moderate, others were fairly extreme. Some were based on religion, Islam, others were based on ideology, nationalism and communism. In 1908, there was the first organization named Budi Utumo, which means Knife Pursuit. And this was an organization that wanted to cooperate with the Dutch colonial authority. Their goal was to expand the education system for everybody inside the Dutch East Indies. In 1912, Serekat Islam, which means Islamic organization, was founded. This was a religious-based organization that basically demanded more democratization inside the Dutch East Indies. It got support in Java, but soon also outside Java. With 700,000 members, it became one of the biggest nationalist movements inside the Dutch East Indies. They also made use of the red white flag you see behind me which later would become the national flag of Indonesia. In 1920 the PKI, the Indonesian Communist Party, was founded. Now these Indonesian communists led a major revolt against Dutch rule in 1926. Alarming reports about an upcoming revolt already reached Dutch colonial authorities prior to the revolt. However, the Dutch did not take these reports seriously. However, it did took place. But this communist revolt was very poorly executed and therefore the Dutch were able to suppress it easily. The PKI was disbanded and those who were members or 
were even associated with it were arrested. A total amount of 13,000 people were arrested and 1,300 of them were expelled, deported as you will, to Bova de Gaulle. It was a panel colony in the remote far eastern territories of the Dutch East Indies in what is now New Guinea. With the PKI disbanded, the PNI, the Partij Nacional Indonesia, stepped in. It was founded in 1927 and its goal was to unite all Indonesians from all ethnicities and religions together to strive for an independent Indonesia. And they did this by mass gathering and non-cooperation. Now the Dutch saw this as a serious threat and soon Sukarno, one of the nationalist leaders, was tried and exiled by the Dutch authorities. In the 1930s, the economic recession also hit the Dutch East Indies. What we see here is that because of budget cuts, poverty struck and many people were unsatisfied. In the beginning of 1933, it led to a mutiny of a Dutch marine ship called the Zeve Provincie near Aceh. It sailed off to Java. The Dutch sent planes and one of these planes dropped a bomb. The plan was that this bomb had to be dropped in the sea in order to scare off the mutineers so they would surrender. However, the bomb landed on the deck of the ship and 23 mutineers died. A member of the Dutch Social Democrat Party stated the following. The spilled blood will be avenged. The local population will see this as a declaration of war. Those who aren't revolutionaries yet will be after this. More repressive measures followed. Nationalist leaders were arrested and exiled. Censorship was applied and Dutch colonial police got more authorizations to maintain order. And only parties that wanted to cooperate with the Dutch were allowed. Now when you hear this, you might think that the Dutch did zero attempts to meet the demands of the Indonesian nationalists. However, this is not entirely true. During the First World War, the Dutch already realized that they had to grant the Indonesians some kind of independence. How this independence actually had to take form and shape, that wasn't entirely clear. In 1916, the People's Council in Dutch Volksraad was established and here Indonesians could take part in. It was basically some kind of parliament. However, it only had an advisory role and therefore had no political power at all. In 1940, the motherland was overrun by Nazi Germany and this basically increased the tensions between the Dutch and Indonesians even further. Independence for the Indonesians seemed far off, but hope loomed at the horizon when the empire of the rising sun, Japan, stepped in. At the end of 1941, the Japanese empire launched a conquest of the western colonies in Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Northern Borneo, Malaya, Singapore, and the Dutch East Indies were overrun by the Japanese Imperial Army. The overthrow of Dutch colonial rule showed the Indonesians that this was actually possible. The Dutch did not seem so invincible after all. Many Dutch were actually surprised that many Indonesians initially did not see the Japanese as their enemy. And this basically showed their complete ignorance about the Indonesian national cause. Indonesians hoped for better times under the Japanese. The Japanese anti-Western and anti-colonial ideas resonated with the Indonesian nationalists. Yet some rules were clearly set against the Indonesian national cause. The Indonesian national flag, red-white, was forbidden in public display. Also, the Japanese calendar was implemented. Japanese holidays became Indonesian holidays. And the Indonesians had to bow for the Japanese. Yet the Japanese did let the Indonesians have management positions. Some things the Dutch never did. 
also the Japanese trained Indonesian youngsters and fed them with anti-Western propaganda. These youngsters had to serve as some kind of home guard in case of an alien counterattack. As the war progressed, the Indonesians were actually granted more freedom and at some point the Indonesian national flag was allowed for public display. Sukarno and Mohammed Hatta were allowed to organize public rallies and meetings. And Sukarno he encouraged Indonesians to sign up for the Japanese labor project. Now here we see the true dark side of the Japanese regime. Because these Indonesian contract laborers, so called remushas, had to work under slave-like conditions and were often treated worse than the western POWs. Many of them died. Also, the Japanese confiscated large amounts of food. As a result of that, many Indonesians starved to death. It turned out that the Japanese did not attack Indonesia to liberate the Indonesians from Western rule. No, they needed Indonesia because of its minerals for their own war industry. The whole story of the greater Asia co-prosperity sphere was just a propaganda story. The Japanese slogan of Asia for Asians was a lie. It was Asia for Japan. It turned out the Indonesians had been deceived. The Japanese were much worse rulers than the Dutch ever were. To that rule did came an end. Because mid-August 1945, the Americans threw atom bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, after which the Japanese Empire surrendered. The sudden Japanese defeat created a power vacuum in Indonesia, and nationalist movements now stepped in. Now against Western belief, there was not one Indonesian nationalist party that wanted to achieve independence. No, the previously mentioned parties made their return, for example the PKI, these Indonesian communists, in an attempt to seize power before the Dutch were able to do so. One important group, or actually I should say groups, were the Pemudas. These were Indonesian youngsters, part of them had been trained by the Japanese as home guard, who managed to get themselves weapons. Now they acted under their own principles and they ran amok when rumors spread that the Dutch would soon return to restore colonial order. Sukarno and his fellow nationalists weren't happy with this chaotic situation and they preferred dialogue with the western powers. He also didn't want to declare immediate independence because this would agitate the western powers. However, he was kidnapped by the Pemudas and pressured and thus on the 17th of August 1945 Sukarno declared Indonesian independence. Six weeks after this, the British set ashore on the Japanese city of Surabaya with their goal to disarm the Japanese. However, they had no intention to battle the Pemudas. They soon found themselves in a full-scale battle against these Indonesian youngsters. Sometimes the British and the Japanese fought side by side against the Pemudas. Also the Pemudas reacted violently towards the Europeans that were now set free. Set free? Yes, because during the war Europeans were interned by the Japanese. And when the war ended, the Europeans were allowed to go free. Many of them were slaughtered by the Pemudas on the most horrifying ways imaginable. I spoke to a woman who saw how Europeans were strung up and while still being alive stabbed to death by Japanese bayonets by these Pemudas. Many Europeans run back to the camps and it's incredible to believe but the Japanese protected them because they were now under British orders. So imagine your former tormentor became your guardian angel. This period is known as the Bersiap period and Bersiap is a battle cry which means be ready. Meanwhile the Dutch government in exile had prepared the re-establishment of Dutch colonial rule. Dutch colonial money was already printed. 
The British, however, initially did not let the Dutch set foot ashore in Indonesia and pressured the Dutch to get into dialogue with Sukarno and his Nationalist Party. However, the Dutch refused this because they saw Sukarno as a collaborator who worked with the enemy, the Japanese. To what extent this is true? I made an in-depth video about that on location in Surabaya, links are in the description. Dutch government therefore started negotiations with the nationalist Sultan Sharir, who they saw as a trustworthy politician because he had not cooperated with the Japanese. At the end of 1946, the Lingijati Agreement was signed and the following was agreed. Dutch would recognize the Indonesian Republic as Java and Sumatra. Indonesia would be organized into federal states of which the Indonesian Republic was one of these states. And the federal state of Indonesia would be part of a Dutch Indonesian Union. The treaty was a compromise for both parties and both parties had a great deal of difficulty selling this to their own people. Meanwhile, the Dutch had already shipped 150,000 troops, most of them draftees from the Netherlands, to the Dutch East Indies. In 1947, the Dutch launched Operation Product. Well, the name already implies what the goal of this operation was. It was an operation to seize the lucrative plantations that were located on Java and Sumatra. Why did the Dutch do that? Well, the Dutch needed money in order to finance their operations in Indonesia and also rebuild the Netherlands after the Second World War was over. After this offensive, the Renville Agreement was signed and the so-called Van Moek Line was established to separate the island of Java between the Dutch and the Indonesian Republicans. Yet, the Republicans violated this line and the Dutch launched a second police action, Operation Krai. Now, this operation here was clearly set against the Indonesian Republic. See, where the first operation, Operation Product, had clearly economic goals, the second operation was politically aimed to take down the Indonesian Republic. The capital of Yogyakarta was seized by Dutch paratroopers and the nationalist leaders Sukarno and Mohamed Hatta were arrested. It was a success for the Dutch. However, the United States halted the Dutch operations because the United States had provided the Netherlands with the so-called martial aid, financial aid to rebuild the country after the Second World War. And this aid was extremely vital for the Dutch post-war economy. So the Americans, they threatened to stop this martial aid and therefore the Dutch ceased hostilities. And at the end of 1949, the sovereignty transfer took place. Indonesia became an independent country. It was basically an execution on the Lingajati Agreement where the Republic of Indonesia was just one state within the United States of Indonesia. However, the United States of Indonesia existed for a very short time because soon the Republic of Indonesia took over the rest. Now how that all happened I will cover in the next video make sure to subscribe now back in 2016 i did some extensive traveling and shot a lot of cool videos and i definitely want to return to indonesia to shoot even more videos so if you want to support me please do go to my patreon page because with your support i can make that happen now i already shot a lot of videos in indonesia like mentioned before and if you want to check out that playlist it's right here, I want to thank you for watching. Itu semuanya, selamat tinggal.